I have so much to say about this film. It has consumed me for a long time. And so I really hope that you have questions and comments and feedback. Because um, we there, there's certain elements that we're still playing with. I didn't say before, it has not been color corrected yet. And the score has also not been finalized. Um, and some really interesting things happened in this screening that we can talk about maybe later. Well, Heidi, why don't we just, I mean, I have a whole, as usual, I have a whole bunch of questions, but why don't we start by giving you a chance to say the most, the thing that's most pressing in your mind right now, having seen it, please do. What is it that you really are feeling you must say? It's more of a question. Okay. Can I ask a question yes, of, of you guys? Okay. We won't be able to answer it quite away, right away, but we, you can ask them. Um, what is really first and foremost in my head right now is the sound. And there was something really interesting for me watching it, which didn't happen when we showed it at the Casser, um, that when the, that sound, the rumbling came in, the whole room shook. And I personally love that. Mm. So did I. I really love that. And I started thinking, oh my God, like if we could get the whole room to shake. So it's, it's a visceral experience. And in, in, for me, as a choreographer, I'm really interested in the visceral experience, um, that the audience is, is, is kinetically involved with what we're doing. And if I can create that, um, that is really exciting to me. So when that rumbling started, I was first I went to Marilis. It's too loud. But then it, 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 the experience of it was really interesting. I can't ask a question of them. Well, based upon, based upon that, um, because we had talked before we came over here about the fact that you were struggling with the, the actually they were thinking about showing it without sound and then with sound. That was one of the, possibilities that was on the table. And I think that that question is fascinating. Um, what, what was, let's hear, let's see if we can hear from, from Marilis about that too. What, what, is the, what is the problem? What is the debate about? Well, I think that from my view, um, the rumbling, we put it in as a temp sound to really get reaction in that space because we have so much information coming out of every, everyone visually. We wanted to do something that was equitable <laughs> on some level and so we, we, came, we land on, on this growing rumble sound. And truth be told, we could not make it as loud as I knew it was going to be when we put it in a room that had nice speakers and um, is tuned to more acoustical environments because the physicalness that, that Heidi is experiencing with the rumble mm -hmm. is, I know, what she's going after with having that connection to the film and that awe of when it stops. That, that expression of, wow, they let go, you know? And that kind of, now I'm free floating. There's a bit of that that happens. Mm -hmm. Um, Roberta, what's your feeling on that? No, I, I agree. I loved the rumble, and I liked it really loud. The way, you know, it starts out so soft, uh, quiet, you know, and then suddenly it comes in. It really drives the film. Well, do you think that we should, I mean, just, just to give you guys a sense of the structure of this, by the way, um, we're just going to talk for about half an hour and then we're gonna open the rest of it up to everybody in the audience. So just hold your questions till the end and then we can have a, a huge debate about all these problems. But I'd like to go back to, I really think we need to just rewind a little bit to square one because dare I ask how many people in the audience have ever seen a dance performance live? Could you raise your hand? Oh good, okay so that helps me know that this question 
is, is, is a viable one, which is another thing we talked about with Heidi and Marilis at great length. Dance for film and dance being filmed. How do we make the distinction between those two, or should we make those distinctions? Do you want to talk about it? Do you want me to? Why don't you talk about it from your perspective? Um, when I thought about making a dance for film, I wanted to think about well, what does film do that I don't think I can accomplish on stage? Mm -hmm. And so I thought about intimacy. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I'm very interested in in my work, and it's been like this since 2006 when I started working with people with disabilities, was this idea of you know, looking at the complexity of different people, people who are, were interesting to me and hopefully interested, interesting to the audience, but also um, kind of mining the uniqueness of each person and what better vehicle than in a film to actually see somebody's face, um, to mm -hmm. see their, them really up close and get an experience of them that you wouldn't be able to necessarily get in the theater. So that was very interesting to me, and that was driving this film for me. Also, my dancers are not your typical conventional dancer, um, and I had to, again, think. Initially, I wanted 20 people in this film. I was gonna take this really broad range of characters and physicalities, and, and I wasn't even really sure what I was gonna do with them, but I had, I had uh, images and I really wanted to portray the beauty of difference. But as we explored it more, I realized I, it's not really about the beauty of difference. It's more about the vulnerability and the fierceness of the dancers I've worked with over the years. And that's really what I wanted to explore in the film. Um, and so I, I mean, if you, it, the elements in the film are not necessarily dance steps. I have fabric, I have hands, I have faces, I have eyes, um, and, I, and I wanted to use those elements and choreograph them, like, so that the, the film was the choreography, the film was a piece of choreography, not that it was, I was, chore I was filming choreography. And that for me was really important. Do you use, do you, just let me jump in here. Do you use the same group? Do you have one group of dancers that you work with all the time? No, I've had the same group now for a couple of years, mm -hmm. but um, the, the big gentleman in the film was my old partner, and I brought him in because I didn't, yeah, I didn't want it to just be about disabled, non-disabled. I wanted it to be about unexpected mm -hmm. bodies. Um, but, but, so the company, I mean, when you're working with people with disabilities, they're not necessarily in the dance world. As a matter of fact, most of them are not. So oftentimes, I can't hold on to them that long. Not to get off the track, because I want to come back to Neil's concern, but when you talk about the people that are in, in this, how did you find them? I mean, the woman without any legs who has incredible arms. She, I was, uh, I was at my gym uh, working out, and I know this gentleman who runs a company of aerialists and acrobats, and I was telling him about GIMP. So this was in 2007. And he said, you know, I have a gymnast who's working for me in Orlando, and she has no legs, and she will never work. So you, you should hire her. Uh, so I met Jen, and Jen was not pretty reluctant to do this. First of all, she was in Florida, and her partner, who is non-disabled, was trying to convince her to do this with me. They were aerialists, so we were thinking about doing a uh, duet for them both. And what I loved about Jen is when she called me up and she said, because this is so out of my comfort zone, I'm gonna do it. 
That's the spirit. That's the spirit that I'm looking for because it, it's pretty risky to put your hands in, the, in, a, in yeah. a choreographer, with a choreographer who's far away and you don't know them and you don't, you've never danced before. Well, you think of dancing and I as want, having legs. Yeah, and I want you to know that Jen Bricker is extremely uh, in the news right now and she worked with Britney Spears. She went on tour with Britney Spears. So this gentleman who said she would never work was wrong. Um, so they, 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 there's a Jerron who's the African American in the film. He was in a workshop. He was an intern at the New Victory Theater, and Sean Curran was teaching a workshop. And Jerron was sitting and just watching, and he asked Jerron to participate. And when he saw Jerron dance, he went up to him and he said, "You must call my friend Heidi." And then Sean called me and said, "You have to see Jerron." And he's been with me now for, he's been working with the company for a little over two years. And he's remarkable. I mean, he's just, so it happens a different way. Well, they were all remarkable. Yes. You know, I have so to say. So Heidi, right. Hi, Mar Marilis, your role is very critical. And just again, for those of you who may not be aware, um, how recently did, did Marilis, did you come into this Maybe process? Maybe a little of your background. <laughs> too. Because that's very cru crucial to how the vision is accomplished. Um, my background is I've done a lot of film editing. I actually started off as a composer that was writing a lot of music for um, film and theater and dance. And I got into film editing because I saw a lot of edits that I thought the timing seemed a little off. <laughs> So I got into doing a lot of film, um, dance film in particular, and a lot of art film, and started actually doing projection design for theater, and um, did a, 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 enough of it that I got some experience in, in different unique ways, um, and really started to build up a body of work with my observations on dance and movement. And I think that because I, I see with my ears, I can bring a specific kind of looking to my cutting. I, I, I hear what I see in a rhythmic way. So a lot of the work we were doing together was in silence, which, you know, one thing I also know about com uh, choreographers and dancers is they're very rhythmic, they're very much, they know um, the beats and how to make music happen visually. That's what they do with their bodies. So I have a really natural simpatico with that. Um, I came into this project pretty late, I would say, because it was... Um, November, I think. November, yeah, I think it was November when we began. Um, and November, you mean? as in three months ago. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but I don't know whether it's accurate to say that you came in late because the, <clears throat> the vision of what, th I know that Heidi also feels that it's not exactly right to call this film a narrative in the conventional sense of telling a story, but be that as it may. Um, the material has to be shaped as a collaborative effort. And I keep getting hung up on this because if, if Heidi were the choreographer of, of, of a conventional dance, which by the way, you will see when her show comes in the spring, if she were the choreographer of a conventional dance, then there wouldn't be any intermediary between her and the dancers. So is it incorrect of me to think that it is different in the sense that the editor somehow is, is, is between the choreographer and the enactors of the choreography? I don't think of that. Okay, I, I don't good. think that way at all. Good. I think that just trying to my, sure, sure. I think my role as an editor is actually just almost as an interpreter. It's like I speak the language called editing <laughs> and she speaks the language called dance and together we come up with a common language called the film, you know? It's kind mm. of, that's where we landed in our conversations together. And 
that's what we agreed. <laughs> and um, we kind of made up that language together by listening to each other and getting on the same page. Because there were times when we started off that we, we had to do a lot of listening, you know? Just mm -hmm. the conversation had to happen mm -hmm. enough times. Um, she needed to play with the footage to the point where I saw what she saw. And then I needed to be able to take what she saw and then bump it up because I had the technical ability to do that. You know, I needed to kind of jump inside her head and say, okay, I know what you want to do and you don't technically know how to do it, but I do. So I'm going to take you on that trip and we're going to take it to the next step. I also want to say that Marilis is a, is a special editor because I came in with a film. Yeah. I had been a film that you've been playing I, with for a long well, time. Yeah. In iMovie. <laughs> yeah. I I had no idea how to use iMovie and I just took my material and tried to make sense of it for months. So by the time she came on board, I was kind of I can be very resistant. I had my mm -hmm. ideas. And what I love about Marilis and we've been working this way now for the past few months, is that she does listen to me. And I feel that I have the freedom to go off on my own, find my own images or orders. Like I did that this morning. I found two new images that I want to insert into the film. And I present it to Marilis. And I think some editors would be like, no, no, we're done. You know, this is, we're done. And it's working and just leave it alone. But instead she stayed so open to my process and then and then we were able to enhance and really travel the distance because I never felt like I was being judged or you know you, you're you would say we have to do it this way right. or we never did it that it was right. just very uh, free flow one of the themes of the film forum over the the rest of the semester has to do with artistic collaboration We'll have producers and directors, directors and editors, a choreographer and an editor. How people work together, how they combine their ideas, how they, as, as Marilise was saying, lift up a project as each person brings their ideas to the table is a very important thing for us to be thinking about. And certainly for many of you who are artists are going to be working with other people. We all know film is a very collaborative medium. And it's finding those ways of working together to create the best possible piece where that's what matters more than ego, more than anything else. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like you've developed quite a very interesting and productive collaboration. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. Do you think that, I mean, I think talking to dancers, we know that Dance is an extremely collaborative art form. We know that <clears throat> dancers all start out as soloists to begin with, but then once they get involved in a piece that is being choreographed for more than one person, they have to learn how to support each other. How do you think that has infused the film? Not sure I know. And I I'm From the point of view of what is going on in the film. From the, Do you the, think that the group, that there is a sense of, of mutual support that you're absolutely. trying? Absolutely. No, but are you, oh. are you consciously trying to make sure that that's there, or do you think it's naturally there? I think it's naturally there. Um, a lot of the material for this film, some of it was made specifically for the film. Some of it was coming from... Uh, material that had been developed that actually are, is part of the other two pieces. And the reason why I wanted to use those, that material is because I felt that it was very expressive for each individual. And this for me was really about showing each person in, in their, like I said, complexity mm -hmm. and beauty and, and urgency but when you have a group like this, they, they are very supportive of each other. And we work, this particular group especially, uh, is just a dream. Mm. I'm very lucky. 
Doesn't always happen that way. Explain the triptych concept so that people understand the context for the film and then the two pieces that come after, which is the triptych, three things. But so tell, tell everyone how that actually is going to play out in the cast, I mean, what's so, the... Yeah, so I had these, these two pieces, Solo Counter Solo, which is a piece for myself and five of my younger dancers, and I am an older dancer, so to me, uh, there is a sense of counterpoint, is what I was playing with, and juxtaposition, and this idea of a more mature performer with younger performers. Uh, there's a lot of themes in that piece. It's a very dancey piece. And it was something that I really needed to make, uh, especially after the last eight years of working with people with disabilities where you can't do that because what they bring to my work is something very different. So the, the other piece, the other section is called Somewhere, and it's been a very interesting evolution because originally it was a series of solos and duets set to Somewhere Over the Rainbow all these very different versions of Somewhere Over the Rainbow. And one of the reasons why I use that song is because <laughs> when I first started working with people with disabilities, I worked with this woman, Lisa Bufano, who's an amputee, and I brought in that song as part of her solo, and she refused to dance to it and said, how can you ask me? to dance to this song. It's like the audience is going to think that I, somewhere over the rainbow I can have another body. I can be a different person and I don't want the audience to think that. And so I shelved the, that piece of music and years later I brought it out again and I felt that it's such a universal song, it's mm -hmm. such an iconic song that if I did it right with different versions that hopefully it will go beyond the sentimental. Right. It would go beyond that which she was worried about, which I think it did. But with, for here, I decided to go another direction because I felt that what I was doing at Montclair State University with a presenter who, Jed Wheeler, who I admire so much for his vision and taking risks, and I wanted to take more of a risk with Somewhere Over the Rainbow. So now it's somewhere to a very different score. And it's a much more spare evening than what it was with beautiful lighting by Robert Rizal. Mm -hmm. And so the, the idea is that these are three sides of a, it's not a coin because a coin only has two sides, but you know what yeah. I mean? That, 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 that there, you've got the intimacy of the film and then you have these two other sections that very much are playing with counterpoint and the themes from the film carry through, even to the point where there's, we are wearing gray in the film and we're wearing black and solo counter solo and I just changed the costumes for somewhere to white because I felt that that also unified the evening. So I've been really looking for things to unify the whole evening as if it was a whole a film, actually, one long film. So Marilis, yeah. on, on that note, I mean, do you think that there's there are there and you have worked on other dance mm -hmm. dance for film films? Mm -hmm. What are some of the commonalities in the two in the media? Um, I think that what is mostly common is the expression of the choreographer through the use of film allows for an intimacy and a stopping of time. Mm. And this sense of being so close to the dance mm. that you can be inside of it. And it, it almost is, it's a reveal. And there's, whereas documentation of dance performance is much more voyeuristic, this is much more intimate. It's, mm. it, it's a, it's a d d drive and desire of the choreographer to, to really create this, 
collaboration with the audience that they take them on that dance with them. So that you actually feel you're a dance partner. Mm -hmm. um, I think that that would be mm -hmm. how I would distinguish those two. Well, you're are. directing the audience to look at one yeah. part. You're, you know, you're telling There's no option. <laughs> no, that's yeah. it. Instead of usually when you see a performance, you're seeing a wide angle shot. You're seeing everything and everybody interacting. And you're dramatizing the, the information that you're putting in front That's of right. Through sound right. support, right. visual support, you know, whatever tools you can come up with. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Can you speak to that a little more, Roberta, because it's very interesting to those of us who aren't filmmakers, but everybody here is. Everybody. Well, most people, some people. Like, what's the, what's the, is there a continuum? Do you see it as a continuum between the, the two media, or is it more like they have, I hate to use words like flow, but is it <laughs> that they have flow? No, I don't know that that's exactly the, the appropriate question. I mean, I think the director will basically tell you yeah. how to look at their film, how to understand it by deciding when you have a close-up, when you want to have a dolly move, you know, when you want to do a telephoto shot. You're always telling the audience, in terms of your screen design, how to see what they're trying to tell you. Mm -hmm. And in this case, you are focusing in. I'm assuming when this was shot, you shot it many different ways, or not. No. No? Interesting. And, and I think that, that, I think that's, <laughs> when you say, I was listening to you, and I that, was thinking, I didn't have any of that information going mm. into this. <laughs> I had to learn as we went. And now you know. the few meetings that we had before we shot, when I was storyboarding, for instance, you know, I don't really understand if the dollies, what the dolly's doing or how, what the effect of moving in on somebody or mm -hmm. moving out. This is not in my vocabulary. Right, this just not. Yeah. I'm a movement person and I'm a mm -hmm. stage person. Uh, so I was very lucky to have a team that helped me. Yeah. That they knew that I was I was not necessarily on top of that information. So they got they did guide me, as Marilis has been guiding me through the editing. Um, and that's interesting because now I have to make another film. <laughs> <laughs> because I have a little bit, a little bit more information, I wouldn't say I understand it all yet. And I have to say, what was so exciting for me was that my dancers were in my computer, so I didn't have to rent space. I didn't have to figure out their schedules. They were all in my computer, and I could work at six in the morning. I could work at midnight, and play. Right, which you can't do when you're doing live theater. Can't do when you're doing a live movie either. Right, you right. know that's yeah. it. You're shooting it. But when you're editing, and then you have that time. Well, this is a very, yeah, this is a, a good point. Post. Luxury post. Let's yes. open it up to um, to you guys now.